All right, everybody, it is time for bits of news. So I'm going to go down the list, and then I'm going to pick um, maybe one or two favorites, and we'll talk about those. <laughs> All right, so the news that came in today was long repair delays impact wheelchair users nationwide. So thank you to Fox 8 uh, for putting that out. Uh, long repair delays impact wheelchair users nationwide. That was put out by WSAW, so thank you to them. Investigative TV, so we're getting some publicity there. Air travel is on track to become safer for wheelchair users, so thank you so much. Uh, Aircraft Interiors International put that out, so uh, we will focus on that for today. Uh, employees learn about living with disabilities, so that's good. That's DLA uh, put that logistics was working on that, so thank you so much for working on that piece. Uh, Sprint Frontier, so Spirit Frontier among airlines that mishandled wheelchairs the most. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spirit and Frontier, get your act together. This was put out by Quartz. So, and don't worry, I'll put out this link so that uh, you can look at all the different pieces of news. Uh, wheelchair user stuck in a motel for three years waiting for an accessible home. Ha! Ah, did we not talk about that? This was put out by RNZ News, so thank you for making that public. Uh, Road Ford Lake wheelchair users die during day trip from care home uh, when boat capsized. So that was put out by Sky News, so thank you for publicizing that. Uh, there should have been some more safety precautions, I guess. Wheelchair that turns into motorbike. How those IIT uh, Madras alumni are enabling thousands of, and I'm sure this is wheelchair users too, to use their new technology. So this was put out by the Indian Express. Are there any plans to make EV chargers or, yeah, Chargers accessible to wheelchair <laughs> users. Who knows? <laughs> this was put out by the Irish Times. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing, but, you know, <laughs> it's like they should have made them accessible from the beginning. <laughs> uh, these apps help people with disabilities travel smarter and safer. So that was put out by The Wired. So we will look at that as a second piece of news. Uh, essential preventative maintenance for wheelchair riders, national seating and mobility. So we might look at that piece as well. So thank you, NSM, for uh, putting out an article here so that we can take a look at that. So let's, let's look here at air travel because um, that's always been important for many of us. So air travel is on track to make our travels safer. So let's see how that is happening here. Right, so this is put out by Aircraft Interiors International. And you might say, Lisa, why do you keep on announcing who put it out? And it's important to do so, so you know that uh, I'm not the one. I'm not the one who wrote the article and to give them credit for uh, putting out information. So that's why I do it. It's kind of a, a legal and a respectful thing that you do for the people who write it. So this was written by Adam Gavin uh, on October 16th, 2024. So it was pretty recent. Uh, the US-based nonprofit organization advancing work that can enable uh, WC-19 rated wheelchair, who the heck? I don't know what WC-19 rated wheelchair users 
to uh, remain in their own wheelchairs on commercial airline flights has announced it has made positive progress with the FAA. So we're, we're getting there, folks. I told you. According to AWU, in September, during a presentation at the Global Forum uh, in Boston, which was attended by 130 industry stakeholders, a representative from the FAA uh, indicated that AWU is now closer to achieving its goal and that wheelchair users can be optimistic that an improved air travel experience is coming. <laughs> can you give us a date? <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, and there's a link for the um, event if you want to see it detail by detail. <laughs> uh, it's a summary, I think. The FAA is currently in the process of setting parameters for the testing and certification of wheelchair tie-down system for aircraft cabins, with the physical work due to begin in 2025. Currently, we have not identified any major issues to uh, installation and mitigation for any minor issues are being developed, said Kelly Buckland disability policy advisor at the U.S. Department of Transportation. We anticipate being able to make a recommendation on installing the tie-down system by the end of 2025. Well, I was hoping the beginning of 2025, but <laughs> I guess uh, I'm not part of the board. And uh, from there, it would take an airline or another group to request the approval and began modifying the cabin interior layout to accommodate a wheelchair in the cabin. It is also anticipated that the DOT would start rulemaking in early 2026 to require wheelchairs uh, be accommodated in the cabin. It's coming. There are still some operational pieces that need to be discussed with the FAA and possibly the need uh, to request an exemption for use added uh, Buckland, an exemption. I'm not sure what they mean by exemption, but we'll see. This process can be aided by the guidance and participation, no, partnership <laughs> offered by AWU and organizations it works with such as Paralyzed Veterans of America, PVA, uh, and representative uh, veterans with spinal cord injury or uh, disease. That's what I have, I guess. And the National Institute of Aviation Research, NIAR, in Kansas. Okay. So we're, we're coming to... This is a long article, but you know that it's, it's being worked on. Organizations are coming together to look at the details of um, the uh, problem here. They need to resolve, I'm sure, a couple of things with aviation, rules and regulations, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so... <laughs> Spirit and Frontier, you need to get your act together. I'm not going to say more about that. We already know. But here's an article that uh, uh, Wired uh, put out this, and this was written by Jacqueline. Don't move on me. Jacqueline Gre Greenberg. So thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, these apps help people with disabilities travel more easily. So we have, let's see, Accessible Go, which we have talked about before. And Accessible Go, you can, uh, I work with them and I post articles there at Accessible Go. Uh, they're the same ones on our channel, but they help uh, us travel and find 
uh, hotels and other accommodations for wheelchair users. So visit them. Access Now uh, is available on the web and as a mobile app. Access Now allows people to search for and discover the accessibility of places and experiences all around the world. So, wow, that's a pretty big database. Uh, the app was created by Mayan Ziv of Canada, so who is a wheelchair user. So she and her staff worked with uh, tourism organizations, so it might be good to check it out. I Access Life, so co-created by Brandon Winfield, who was injured in a motocross accident that left him with thoracic spinal cord injury that paralyzed him for the, from the waist down. iAccess Life is a mobile app that allows its users uh, to rate, review, and research locations based on accessibility. So that's very cool. It was launched in 2019. The mobile app has accessibility ratings for ever uh, for over 10,000 unique locations. So, uh, so I access life is worth checking out. A uh, wheel map that I've talked about before in one of my uh, presentations. So, wheel app uh, was uh, originally started by a non profit organization. Can't even pronounce it. Zoziel Elden, EV, <laughs> in Europe because of the lack of uh, regulations of wheelchair accessibility in public spaces outside of the United States. So wheel app for outside of the US. Google map, of course, we all know. So Google map uh, also helps us get around and <coughs> to get to places that are accessible for, um, for those of us who consider ourselves, no, we are. We are um, in the category of pedestrians. So Google Map will show you where to go, where it's possible to get through. Be My Eyes, that is for the blind. So uh, I haven't talked much about that one, but Be My Eyes is for the blind. That will help you get through, uh, you know, trails and roads and how to get to XYZ place. So that is awesome. Features on your iPhone. Uh, Apple products offer numerous accessibility features. For example, the iPhone Live Captions feature allows users who are deaf or hard of hearing. So that is awesome. Other resources. Uh, in addition to those apps or to these apps and the websites, Travel blogs like Curb Free with Corey Lee, Have Wheelchair Will Travel, uh, and Simply Emma are great places to find accessible travel tips. Apps like Gallapro uh, allow deaf and hard of hearing uh, users the change to read captions at Broadway shows if they aren't already offered. So. Uh, all of these things are coming left and right for us, and this is really important for us to take a look at them, support them, so we can get more, uh, more help, more accessibility. Now, National Seating and Mobility, I know them well. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, okay, so I want to recommend also that you read the article by National Seating and Mobility. Uh, essential preventative maintenance for wheelchair riders. So, uh, so that's it's usually a good article when they when they put them out. Uh, once in a while, they put out ones that are good. You know, clean your wheelchair, care for the casters, uh, wash <coughs> cushions and other movable item uh, items. Uh, four, check all nuts and bolts on regular basis. Monitor tire pressure if you have that type of wheelchair, uh, wheels. <laughs> Take care of the battery and advocacy alert help make preventative maintenance a covered benefit 
for wheelchair riders. So, yeah, we don't have that yet in many insurance companies. So, um, so they have some tips there. Uh, so it's, it's going to happen if we make our voices known. So uh, there we go, folks. Those are the pieces of news. I will put out all of the uh, links so you can read them uh, when you have time. Uh, sometimes we're running here and there. So uh, that is it for pieces of news.